if, if, you want, if, if you want to do something really innovative, you have to apply a sort of first principles analysis, not, not, and don't, don't reason by analogy. Analogies are, are referencing the past. Um, it, it, so you, first principles means you, you, you look at the most fundamental truths in, in a particular arena, uh, um, and, and the things that really are almost indisputably correct, um, and you reason up from there to a conclusion. Um, and and if, you, if you see that that conclusion is at, is at odds with, with what people generally believe, then you have an opportunity. Mm. Um, yeah. Now, you can't operate like that on all things because it takes too much mental horsepower. So most of your life you have to operate by reasoning by analogy. But if you really want to innovate, you must reason for first principles to identify the problem. Um, well, I think it's important to um, have a, a very, um, to, to apply critical thinking to, this may sound trite, but to apply critical, critical thinking to what, what one is doing. Um, and um, by, by that I mean just um, the fundamentals of logic, you know, of, of um, do you have the right axioms, um, are they relevant, and are you making the right conclusions based on those, on those axioms. That, that's the essence of critical thinking, and yet it is amazing how often people fail to do that. Um, w I think wishful thinking is uh, innate uh, in the human brain. Um, you, you, you want things to be the way you, you, you wish them to be, and so you tend to filter uh, information that you shouldn't filter. Um, that's the most common flaw that I see. Really, really liking what you do, what, whatever area that you get into, um, given that you know, even if you're, if you're the best of the best, there's always a chance of failure. So I think it's important that you really like whatever you're doing. Um, if, if you don't like it, life is too short. Um, you know, I, I'd say, if, if, and, and also if, if, you, if you like what you're doing, you think about it even when you're not working. I mean, you, you're, it'll just, it, it's, it's something that your mind is drawn to. Um, and, and if you don't like it, you, you just really can't make it work, I think. The biggest mistake in general that I've made and I'm trying to correct for that is uh, to put too much of a weighting on somebody's talent and not enough on their personality. Um, and I've made that mistake several times. In fact, I, then I'd say, oh, gee, I'm not going to make that mistake again, and then I would make it again. Um, and, and I think it, it actually matters uh, whether somebody has a good heart. It really does. And, and I've, made the, I've made the mistake of thinking, that sometimes it's just about the brain. It's very important to like the people you work with. Otherwise, life, you know, your job is going to be quite miserable. Um, and in fact, we have a, um, <clears throat> a strict no assholes policy at, at, at SpaceX. And we fire people if they're, I mean, we give them a little bit of warning, but if they continue to be an asshole, then they're fired. I think also people tend to overweight risk um, on a personal level. It's one thing if you've got, you know, a mortgage to pay and to support and that if you were to deviate from your job that well how are you going to feed your family and get around to okay that's understandable but let's say you're young and you're just coming out of college or coming out of high school or whatever the, what, what do you what do you risk you know you're not going to stop so I would, I would encourage you to take risks now do something bold um, you won't regret it depending on how well you want to do particularly if you're starting a company you need to work super hard so what, what does super hard mean? Um, well, when my brother and I were starting our first company, uh, in, instead of getting an apartment, we just rented a, a small office and we slept on the couch. Uh, and we, we showered at the, the YMCA. And uh, we're, we're so hot up, we had just one computer. So the, 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 the website was up during the day uh, and I was coding at night. Seven days a week, all the time. Um, and I... I uh, so briefly had a girlfriend in that period, and in order to be with me, she'd have to sleep in the office. So, work like hell. I mean, you just have to put in, you know, 80 hour, 80 to 100 hour weeks every week. Gosh. And That's then, a lot of work. That, 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 all those things improve the odds of success. Okay. Um, right. I mean, if, 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 if other people are putting in 40 hour work weeks and you're putting in 100 hour work weeks, then even if uh, you're doing the same thing, you know that in, in one year you will achieve what they achieve. You, you will achieve in four months what it takes them a year to achieve. But in general, I do think it's worth thinking about like, wh what you, whether what you're doing is going to result in disruptive change or not. If it's just incremental, 
it's unlikely to to be something major. It, it's it's got to be something that's substantially better than than what's gone on before. If you're entering anything where there's an existing marketplace against large entrenched competitors, then your product or service needs to be much better than theirs. It can't be a little bit better because then you put yourself in the shoes of the consumer and they say, why would you buy it as a consumer? You're always going to buy the trusted brand unless there's a big difference. So a lot of times, uh, you know, an entrepreneur will come up with something which is only slightly better. Um, and it's, it's not, it can't just be slightly better. It's very important to, to seek out, uh, to actively seek out um, and listen very carefully to negative feedback. Um, and this is something that people tend to avoid because mm -hmm. it's, it's painful. painful yeah. um, but but the, I think this is a very common mistake. A well thought out critique of whatever you're doing is as valuable as gold. Um, and you should seek that from everyone you can, but particularly your friends. Um, usually your friends know what's wrong but they don't want to tell you because they don't want to hurt you. Um, so, yeah, so they'll, you know, they'll say, oh, I would encourage my friends, so I'm, gonna t I'm not going to tell him what I think is wrong with this product. Yeah. It doesn't mean your friends are right, uh, but very often they are right. Um, and you at least want to listen very carefully to what they say. And to everyone, you're looking for, basically, you, you should take the approach that that you're wrong, um, you know, that, that, that you, the entrepreneur, are wrong. Your goal is to be less wrong, to have a high pain threshold. <laughs> That's it. Um, there's a friend of mine who's got a good saying, which is that starting a company is like eating glass and staring into the abyss. Okay, that's, um, that's generally what happens. Because um, when you first start a company, there's lots of optimism and things, things are great. And then, so happiness at first is high. Then you encounter all sorts of issues, uh, and happiness will steadily decline, <laughs> and then you will go through a whole world of hurt. <laughs> That's, and then eventually, you'll, if you succeed, and in most cases you will not succeed, um, and, and Tesla almost didn't succeed, came very close. I think it's, 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 it's very difficult to start companies and, and quite painful. Um, I think that's important to bear in mind. I don't know if that's, that's probably not encouraging. Um, let me go this way. If you need inspiring words, don't do it. You had that third failure in a row. Did you think, I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. I mean, I'd have to be dead or completely infested. It turned out that the third failure was caused by a two-second glitch in the timing. Eight weeks later, Musk bet the company on another flight. We have liftoff. And this time around, everything worked. Perfect. If that fourth launch hadn't worked, that would have been it. Um, we would have not had the resources to mount a fifth. You couldn't have gone on at that point. We, we, it, yes, death would have been, I think, inevitable because we did not have the resources to, to mount a fifth launch. This is a tricky business. Tricky. <laughs> yeah. The, with, yeah, I wish it wasn't so hard. Um. <laughs>
by reasoning by analogy. But if you really want to innovate, you must reason from first principles to identify the problem. Um, well, I think it's important to um, have a, a very, um, to, to apply critical thinking to, this may sound trite, but to apply critical, critical thinking to what, what one is doing. Um, and um, by, by that I mean just um, the fundamentals of logic, you know, of, of um, do you have the right axioms, um, are they relevant, and are you making the right conclusions based on those, on those axioms. That, that's the essence of critical thinking, and yet it is amazing how often people fail to do that.